Then I got Z6. I just, I thought you were gonna be the perfect side chick to my Sony a7 III. I mean, we had a great honeymoon phase and all, right? I mean, you still have the best ergonomics out of all the other cameras. You still have the best electronic viewfinder. You actually, you have the best looking camera overall and I love the sound of your shutter. But you're just not giving me what I want at this point. I think we're gonna, I think the number two spot's been taken by, by Canon. Sorry. Hey, no cars? Yeah. Okay, ready? And go ahead. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've been a little spoiled with this 8512. I'm actually, it's kind of blew my mind a little bit with how accurate the IEF is with the new firmware. I'm gonna test it out in action. I'm gonna have her do a lot of walking shots in this shoot. I'm gonna see how accurate it really is. So maybe I could despoil myself and not like put the cannon down because people are looking at me like I'm cheating on my girl with this camera because you know I'm a, I'm a Sony shooter mostly. Gotcha. So we're gonna be testing this out with Gabby. I've been wanting to shoot with her for a couple of years, so she's my model today. And, um, and every time I say and um, I look at the person to like fill the gap in. <laughs> Couple of different looks, just move your hands around, have a little fun. When I initially tested the Canon EOS R and the Nikon Z6 last year, I honestly liked the Nikon more for a couple of reasons, but things have changed. Let me tell you why. Love that again. Love it. Again. All right, Gabby's, I'm gonna have her here. I know the sun is coming in from this side. It's starting to get brighter, but it's, you see the light on her face? There's not a lot of shadows. It's actually it's actually flattering, harsh light, if that makes any sense. But it looks flattering, I'm gonna use this. And I got the cars on the side that's gonna give me like that city vibe. The IEF on this camera is just impressing me so much. You know what's funny is that those cars, I'm, I said they give me the city vibe, but you can barely tell their cars because it's so blurry at 1.2. Oh, I love this one, because now you get the colors of the trees right behind her in the line. But I'm shooting at f1.6 right now. I was trying to shoot this image at f1.2, but I couldn't because my shot was overexposed. One of the things I wish this camera had was the ability to use an ISO less than 100, like the Z6 and the a7 III can for those really bright days. Unlike Nikon, Canon came out the gate and crushed it with these RF lenses. Nikon was boasting about their large lens mount, how it can handle large aperture lenses, but it's Canon that released the wide aperture lenses like the 85 1.2. Let me have you walk into the shot, like looking, like looking, yeah, looking like at, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. So like looking at that little trolley over there, so you're gonna walk into the shot, like kind of looking back, having to play with your hair a little bit and just have, yeah. Yeah, drag those feet. Love it, see, you got it. I love that, I do like that. That's awesome. That's nice, really love cool. it. Let's see shooting from a lower angle, a little bit more drama. Good. Perfect. Love it. Canon's eye autofocus is much improved after the latest firmware update, but still not Sony good. The Nikon Z6 eye autofocus is good only when the AF decides to work right. Even taking a simple portrait like this, it would give me trouble and focus on the background. All right, I'm having a pose right here. Seems like a very cliche shot sitting on a bench, but there's like a little twist to it. See those little flowers? Kind of framing her with those little white flowers just to add a little interest. What, give me uh, three different variations, okay? Ready? That's one, good. Next one, that's too perfect. I love it, love it, love it. All right, before I continue with the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to my sponsor for this video, Storyblock. Storyblock's video is a great service when you're in need of a quick video clip for B-roll, After Effects template or motion background and it's all royalty free. Storyblock gives you studio quality 4K stock video without blowing your budget. For example, I used some New York B-roll clips from Storyblocks in the beginning of this video to give the video context. I totally forgot to shoot B-roll clips while I was in New York, so it was nice being able to just add it when I was home. Click on the link in the description below to learn more about Storyblocks video. Shout out to Akella Contracting for a backdrop. All right, so now here, I want you to just keep playing with your hair. 
Okay, he's about to move. Wait, wait, wait. Ready? Fast. Keep it with the hair. Chin up. Oh, Killa, don't leave us. Chin up, chin up higher. A little bit more to the side. We got it. That was good. Hey, no cars? Okay, ready? And go ahead. Because I was shooting at f1.2, I was able to use the cement barrier to give me a fade at the bottom of the picture. I could sit here for 20 minutes talking about what I like, what I don't like, what's better, what's not better. We can sit here all day because these are two really good cameras. I was high on this camera, on the Nikon Z6. I knew the autofocus wasn't all there, but I figured, eh, it's a first generation camera, they'll fix it with firmware. And what ended up happening was they did improve it. They put continuous IAF. I mean, when it works, it works really well. But at the end, in 2019, Canon is the one that really upgraded their camera with firmware. And that's why I'm super high on this camera. There's so many things to like about the Canon system right now, especially the lenses. They've got the best lenses. The, the wide aperture beast that performs so well, which Nikon should have done with their wide, with their big mount, they should have released those lenses and instead they released these little black tubes, little 1.8 lenses, which are okay, they, they're good, it's just they're not like inspiring or anything. But what I'm trying to say here is, of all the things to nitpick with these two brands, I feel like the one thing that's the absolute deal breaker with these two is the autofocusing of the Nikon Z6. After all the firmwares, it still has the same problem. In auto area AF, which is like basically wide area, and you're letting the camera do the thinking for you. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm shooting portraits. There's a person in front of my camera and the Nikon will still focus on the background. And I'll keep pressing the button and it'll just keep focusing on the background. And I'm just like, really? Like, you can't figure out that that's the subject. With the Canon and Sony, I don't have that problem. It's predictable. There's, it's, it's just, they have smart autofocus systems. When Gabby was crossing the street, I don't have any problem with the Canon picking up like a car or the or back start back of focusing. It knew what to focus on, and it was Gabby. That is what I want from an autofocusing system. With the Nikon, you have to just know how to use it. See, auto area AF, I can't. I can't rely on it. So you have to know how to use it. And you're gonna be putting this joystick to good use, let me tell you. And so at the end of the day, like all these cameras are really good. They all have their pros and cons in terms of features. You have to decide which one is better for you. But for me, for a portrait photographer, I am not gonna go with the Nikon Z6 as my second um, option. I have like my own little ranking system. Canon comes in at second. It has a much improved AF system. It has the best lenses right now for mirrorless cameras and I could, and the colors are great. Okay, I had to throw that in there, but the color, Canon color is amazing and it's so natural and I love it. So Canon is my new number two. I'm actually thinking about buying into the Canon system because of these these lenses that are just so sexy, the 85.12, 51.2, I mean, it's just, these lenses are just so good. They're just really expensive. Nikon, on the other hand, I, I loved it. And you could ask my YouTuber friends. You know what, even my buddy, that I let him use this camera for a couple of days, he, and he's a he's a Nikon shooter. He has a, Ni he has a Nikon D800 or D810. And he, when he returned it to me, he said the same thing. He's like, I'm glad I borrowed it because now I know that I'm gonna just stick with my D810 or D800 because the autofocusing is just not reliable. He couldn't lock onto his son. And it just, it's just, the sto it's just what it is. It's just what it is. I'm just here to give you guys my honest opinion. So um, I think I'm gonna do a dedicated video on the Nikon. Like I said, I have literally dedicated videos on this camera with recording the EVF showing this problem happen in the real world. So stay tuned for that. And also stay tuned for the Sony versus Canon video that I have coming out pretty soon with the 8512 versus the 8514. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. All right, that is all I have for now. I'll see you in the next one.